Hi Command, I've reached the enemy base on Planet X-01. I'm now making my way down a series of stairs leading to a control room overlooking a cavern. It's too dark to see what's on the other end. I'll see if I can turn on a light. Some sort of large blast door is obscuring something. According to these panels, it's some sort of instant travel device. I'm going to go down there to see if I can take a closer look. Get that door open and see exactly what we're dealing with here. This could be big. This could be really big. Operative, this is command. There's something going on. Oh, our sensors have picked up a silent alarm. You need to get the hell out of there now. I repeat, get the hell out of there. Confirmed. Mission cancel. Returning to evac site. Hey guys, Morphologist here. What's up guys, it's Wasted Space. And today on Patchology, we're talking about 1.099, which has introduced a number of bug fixes once again. One of the coolest things though, was the DirectX 11 Skybox support update. Yeah, we've been waiting for that one for a long time, so it's very nice to finally have that one in. And another thing worth noting is they've finally fixed the window transparency problem where you could see straight through windows from both sides. So about time that the DirectX 11 ships have finally got that sleek look on the outside that they need with a bit of glass. Well, thanks, Keen, for finally getting on your game. No, I'm just kidding. You guys have been doing a great job. But today, we are actually not going to talk so much about what's in the patch notes. Instead, we're going to talk about really why they're working so hard to patch and fix the game of, with all of its bugs that it currently has. And that's because planets. And that's what we're taking a look at today. But let's be really honest here. We're, we're not talking about the planets. We're talking about the source code planets. These, this is the stuff that we picked up off of working really hard uh, with the existing source code to get it to work. Yeah, this was a big pain in the ass, honestly. It's seven and a half hours or so I think it's taken us to get this video together, just the recording side of things. That's not us actually getting a chance to talk about any of it. That's just trying to get the damn thing to work and get to the point where we can record this video for you. So it's been a real trial and I really wouldn't recommend you guys get involved and try out source code planets yourselves at this point because I think it's just a little bit too difficult. But it does give us a pretty good idea of why they're going forward with all these fixes, why they're going forward with all these changes, because firstly, it needs it. But secondly, we get a chance to look at a bit of the sort of the end goal. Yeah, the, it's kind of hard seeing all these updates for so long now with bug fixing. And it's so hard to have a conversation about them because they're really not all that exciting. But that's why we're taking a look at this, because really, you have to think, they have to do these things, otherwise we're not going to have a good version of planets when they do come out. Right? We've had a ton of issues today, and it's been so frustrating. I would hate for somebody who's just gotten the game to get into it, and then they're, like, super excited to play on planets and, like, a fully procedurally generated world where they can go straight from space to a planet, and then the game just keeps crashing. I mean, that would be horrible. So yeah, it's been an interesting experiment playing around with the source code and trying to get the planets working and get an idea of what they're going to be like. But I do feel that we've now got a bit of an idea what they're going to be like. And the first thing I think we need to talk about is the sheer scale of everything. Because you don't appreciate it until you go and see it firsthand. A 50 kilometer planet is enormous. And that's about the size of planets I think they've been talking that they're probably going to have in the game. Around 0.5G is what it generates. And now you may say, why don't they have full-size, full-scale planets? Okay, guys. 50K. I, I don't know if you know this. It's huge. You could fly for 15 minutes and it would fill your screen and you still wouldn't reach the surface of the planet. And that's not even to speak for what happens when you get on the surface. We encountered a few issues that we didn't even consider once we got on the surface. Wasted space. What was that issue? Yeah, so uh, we have mentioned already that we've had some crashing problems with the source code. Uh, it's all a bit sort of slapdash because it's obviously it's not Keen's work. It's been assembled from editing the code. And one of the issues we've had is crashing. So we've been trying to put together these hopefully kind of cool like World War II style fighter planes to fly around the planet's surface with because we thought that would look kind of nice but one of the issues we had with the crashing is i actually managed to lose mine at one point so we'd gone down on the world and because morph has the save i was the guy that got reset back to the center of the world when we next loaded in which is 
five, six minutes worth of travel away from the planet itself. And when you get down there, all I knew that was that it was 22,000 meters away from where Morph's Beacon was. Can I find something that tiny in such a vast expanse? No, the end result was I had to use SE Toolbox and copy GPS locations in the end result. But that is the sort of scale you're talking about. It's so vast that losing even reasonably brightly painted, well-lit ships is t super duper easy unless you've got something to help you. Now, that's this is a good place to, to go off of because not only is it difficult to find a ship, but we also had issues with actually getting to them within a certain amount of time. See, the, the current max speed of 111 meters a second for engineers really isn't cutting it for the scale of these planets. You literally could go for like half an hour just going around the surface. You would never find the thing that you were working on. And it takes so long to get around because of that max speed. So if they're going to have these planets, I, I really hope that they're going to change the max speed so you wouldn't have to use like mods or something. Just some way of integrating it into the game would be really cool because the, the time scales involved do detract from the gameplay quite a bit. Especially, you know, we had this issue this evening where it was crashing quite a lot. And so every time it crashed, at least one of us would have to go from where we spawned to where our base was on the planet. And that was about 40,000 meters. At 111 meters a second, that takes ages. And it was every single time. So it's this it's an area that needs to be addressed, I think, to really get the potential out of planets. And the jump drive goes some of the way to doing that. But of course, you can't do that near mass objects. So on the planet's surface itself, you think, there is so much space. How much of this space is actually going to be that usable? Dare I say some of it's wasted? Oh, dear. Ha, 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 ha. All right, well, now this isn't so much of a smooth transition, but we really have to talk about it. One of the issues we found once we got on planets and started to build these planes that we were talking about for the video is how to actually build them well, because at 0.5 Gs, your jetpack no longer works. So gravity becomes an issue for constructing large projects. And we actually found kind of a interesting solution to that. Yeah, I mean, it, just to emphasize how much of an issue this is before we go any further, it was a problem to the point where just getting into some of my craft, because you naturally have a cockpit on the top, would result in the craft being pushed into the ground with enough force to break bits of it. And so you were building ramps to try and jump on board your craft. And even that was causing problems. So it is a bit of a big issue. But the solution that we've come up with, and I have to credit Morph one for this one, and it's, it's relatively simple, is simply n sort of normal gravity generators do work in a natural gra gravity environment. Of course, they only affect the astronaut. But it does mean if you can place a gravity generator well enough, and if you use the block rotation and press B so that you've got the station block rotation, it will naturally align itself perfectly with the ground level. You've got yourself a way of neutralizing gravity in an area, which is perfect for astronauts and useless for everything else. But just a little tip for building, trust me, that one makes a big difference. Yeah, if you're planning on getting in your ship or going around it to craft it on a planet's surface, plan on building yourself a gravity generator first. Otherwise, it's just not going to happen real well. Okay, so now that we've kind of covered building issues, another thing we talk, we, we encountered was a netcode issue. I don't know if you noticed in the footage of us flying around in the first part of this video or in the background, but we're kind of like jiggling around a lot and that has a lot to do with how much is being generated on the surface. There's so much information and it's really affecting the where the location because it it's, has to calculate so much information. It's really hard to, to play smoothly with another player. Well, I think especially in this sort of environment is pulling out some of the intrinsic weaknesses in Space Engineers' current netcode. You know, in space, there are very few objects to keep track of. So there's very little data being transferred between clients. You know, you've got a few static objects, maybe a few asteroids around, and I'm sure people have noticed that when you get a lot of entities around, the netcode gets worse. 
you come to a planet where there are trees which are actual physics objects as i'm sure you're seeing in some of this footage you know they exist they can be uprooted they they obey gravity all of this stuff exists and is very cool but it's putting major strain on the netcode side of things and so it's really highlighted that that needs to be a priority area for keen at the moment and so, again, I, I hope some of this fixing period is indicating that that is also something they're taking seriously because it's, it's evidently really badly needed. And if nothing else, this amount of wasted space <laughs> does require some people to fill it up. You cannot do it on your own. Now, on that note, let's talk a little bit about, well, planets, like what the exciting part, like what, what there is to look forward to in planets and why why you know it's it's such a big thing for the game i i really think that it's gonna add a lot personally it you're gonna be able to build like bases on there and and take over entire planets destroy them and as you saw in this video we created like an underground base that turned out to be a lot of fun to make and a lot of fun to walk around on now on the flip side i come at this as somewhat of a critic i was always suspecting that planets were going to be a bit of an issue because the scales that people were talking and I was just thinking well from a purely gameplay perspective if you're just thinking I'm here to play a game I want to have you know, faction wars I want to build things whatever it is you want to do having vast areas of space doesn't necessarily help with that there has to be other parts to it so I was a bit of a critic about the whole idea but I have to admit Playing on the source code has changed my mind a little bit, and only because it looks so damn cool. It makes the environment feel at home, and it gives it some sort of perspective almost. You, 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 space doesn't really mean a huge amount until you've got somewhere that isn't space to think about at the same time. And I can't wait for what could be possible if you combine something like planets as they currently stand with some seriously stable netcode like we've just been talking about. You put the two things together and this could be really impressive. So I think even as a critic who's someone who approaches it from the perspective of that's probably a bit too much space for this sort of game, I've been kind of impressed by what I've seen and kind of interested to see where this could go in future. And as I said, especially combined with this whole netcode side of things. Now. I think that we can't overlook the fact that it's damned beautiful as well, even it's in its current form, with a lot of this stuff missing, like additional foliage and issues with the grass rendering and the trees rendering and density. Despite that, with the atmosphere in there, with the sun rising and setting and the atmospheric changes, it's beautiful. Especially with, with, your, with your creations in the foreground and this beautiful planet in the background and the stars coming out at night. It's just cool. I, I know it's not really like a gameplay thing. It doesn't really add so much for it to be beautiful, but damn, does it make it nice to play. Aesthetic is a gameplay thing, I think. In reality, if you put your creations, the things you've invested your time into, into a beautiful environment, it makes those creations better. They gain value from it. And it's definitely something I've seen here. I can't argue with what you've said there. The sunrise and the sunset look amazing. There's a haze in, in the environment. And you, you out, sort of outline some of your creations in, in DX11, which I've finally been sold on, thanks to Planets. And it looks great. And the only thing I think is perhaps a little bit weak, and perhaps you'll see a little bit of in the videos in the background here, is nighttime at the moment, and the nighttime lighting is pretty poor. You know, there's a bit of work that needs to go into there. There's a lot of... Um, bioluminescent grass going on and other sort of weirdness but that's only a matter of time you've got to remember this, this this is not Keen's final project and it's worth mentioning that part of the reason why it's not worth investing time into source code at the moment is because Keen are currently not updating it whatever they're up to they've decided that the github is not getting updated at the moment so we're running on version 1094 to run the dedicated client rather than version 1099 so you know it's something that i'm sure with their version of planets and somewhere in keen's little laboratory their version of planets running on the absolute update up-to-date client with whatever clever stuff that they're working on for future is pretty damn impressive 
just based off this. It looks so cool. And if you've seen their screenshots that they've posted, they already look different than the source code planets. The atmosphere has been improved. You don't see the stars peeking through the atmosphere as much. Things are crisper. There's also like different textures that we don't have available in the source code. So I think it's, that pretty much says, yes, they've got some cool stuff going on in the background. Now, before we conclude this video, because we're pretty much here at the end where we want to ask what you guys think, I just want to say a few things that I would like to see next. Not just bug fixes, but additions to the game that come with planets. We touched on issues with finding things on the planet once you've lost it. I think this is a good place to mention, I hope that they add some sort of mapping or compass system for planets, because that'd make it much easier for you to navigate. I mean, besides just putting out a beacon. Something functional on the HUD would seem to me to be pretty effective, but other than that addition, right now, I'm really excited about planets, and I, I really, I know they have to do a bunch of bug fixing, but I hope they come out soon. Definitely, the map feature would be a very cool one. I know you've mentioned it before, it's kind of your 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 thing that you're pushing for, and I think it would be a very, very cool addition to the game. The, the thing that I would gun for, if I had a choice, would be for more of integration to happen between the modding community and and the community that's pushing fixes to github and keen i know there's a huge amount of work going on behind the scenes from some really dedicated community members that at the moment i, I suspect keen are very busy with planets and netcode and all this stuff but it looks like for the time being they're not doing a huge amount with it and i just really hope that if they're going to do anything in future it's not abandon that as a thing because that was a very very cool thing they started to do there and i think it was something that was only going to make the game better so i hope you know just this isn't a sign that that's kind of waning yeah now that's uh i think that's a it's a good it's a good place that i think they really if they open it up to the community it could be super helpful i mean think about additional biosphere packages that they could release plants that could spawn in with different colored grass and plant life and uh, well maybe actual animal life i don't know yet we'll have to see but i think that it's looking pretty good from the source code but what are your thoughts guys we're interested to hear what you like to see out of planets why are you looking forward to them why are you waiting for them what's gonna be what's really going to be exciting about them for you and in addition to that what are some features that you think would be cool to see added along with planets once they do come out. Now, what are those things that you really want to see on a planet? You know, there are bits and bobs missing from Space Engineers. There's all this stuff. Some of it's covered by mods, some of it isn't. What are those features that you think would make planets? Is it territory ownership? Is it, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I'm going to leave it up to you guys. But what is it that's going to make planets for you guys? Yeah, well, thanks guys for watching again. I hope to see you guys next week. And that was fun. So yeah, thanks a lot guys, cheers for watching, and catch you next week.